What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here tonight with a review for The Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season five. I believe this is episode 13. If not, it'll be correct in um, the description bar below. The episode was titled No Shows and Showdowns. So you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into this episode review, shall we? All right, you guys, so before we actually get into this episode, we got a few things to talk about. One of them is a bit of housekeeping when it comes to this channel in the comment section. So there was a comment that was hidden from me for about two weeks that I didn't see because YouTube had flagged it as, um, they didn't flag it as spam, they flagged it as something that was inappropriate. So I saw the comment and the comment said to me, how much does Monique pay you guys to kiss her ass? <laughs> let's, 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 let's be honest with you guys. First and foremost, I don't know Monique from a can of paint. I don't know her from Tom's Cat. I don't know Monique. So Monique ain't paying me shit to do my reviews. This is my, these are my opinions. Now, if you guys don't agree with my opinions, that is fine. I said that from the first episode with this fight. If you guys don't agree with my opinions, that is fine that you don't agree with what I say. But what we will do in the comment section is you're going to respect me and you're going to respect everybody else that's in the comment section. That's all I ask for. If you feel like Mon if you feel that Candace is wrong in the situation, say that. If you feel that Monique is wrong in the situation, say that. If you feel that Karen is Team Monique, say that. If you feel that like Karen is Team Candace, say that. But be, be respectful when you say the shit. Be respectful. Like that's all I ask is have respect. Like I said, Monique doesn't pay me. I don't know why you would get where you would get that I kiss Monique's ass because from the beginning I have not been on Monique's side with this whole situation between she and Candace. So for that one, it didn't. The comment didn't bother me. It was just something that I was like, you know what? We're gonna mention it. So yeah, Monique does not pay me. She has not been on my channel. She does not contact me. I don't know Monique. So, so yes, Monique does not pay me. If she did pay me, I'm pretty sure she would be asking for her money back because again, what? I'm calling her out on her shit. Now, if you take offense to me saying that I like Monique, that's your problem, not my problem. But I will definitely say though that my opinions of her, like me liking her, that is swaying. And let's, since we're talking about my opinions of Monique, let's discuss Monique. Cause I'm, I put my video up last week before I watched the after show. And then I watched the after show and oh my God, the after show. When she said that Candace was childish for pressing charges on her and then Ashley decided that she wanted to chime in and say, yeah, Monique has a business and Monique has kids. I was sitting here thinking to myself like, you got to be shitting me. You have got to be shitting me. So because Monique has kids and a business, Candace was supposed to say fuck that and just get hit in the, in the head? No. Monique wasn't thinking about her kids or her businesses when she hit Candace. So fuck her businesses and fuck her kids. I'm not being, and I don't mean that to be rude or disrespectful, but that's just the, that would be how I would feel if it happened to me. I'd be like, fuck that and fuck that. And then I know she posted on social media about, Can you know, she said that she reached out to Candace after the fight happened and, her, you know, Candace's lawyers had reached out to her lawyer and at that point, that's when the com you know, communication stopped. But here's my thing. If you're going to reach out to her, why not give her a phone call instead of sending her a fucking email? You hit her. So be a grown ass woman and call the girl. If you finally realize that you were wrong for what you did, call her and say, you know what, Candace, I've been sitting here going back and forth and I've been thinking and you didn't deserve what happened to you. And I apologize to you because what she's trying to say is that Candace didn't want the apology all Candace wanted was money because it was a civil suit. I don't give a fuck if it was a civil suit, criminal suit, whatever suit. Here's the thing that you something that you have to remember more specifically. Like this is something that you have to remember. If you like, this is people who have money. This is for most of the people who have money or anything to lose. Like if you know that you got something to lose and another person necessarily doesn't have as much to lose, think about what you're gonna do before you do it. When you hit her, it was free rent for her to do whatever the hell she wanted to do. I do wish, however, that the, um, the judge had actually let this case go to um, trial because, you know, Monique has been saying for weeks, 
you know, watch your journey, watch your journey, watch your journey. And I'm watching the journey and the journey to me is bullshit, Monique. Period, point blank. The journey is bullshit because the episode with your pastor, you and these are air quotes because you seemed like you were remorseful in that episode. But now on the after show, it's like you backpedaling. And the after show was filmed after this. The after show was just filmed a few weeks ago. So watching the journey, huh, Monique? I see you. But with this fight, I'm really over it. And more specifically, I'm over it because of Monique. That's why I'm over it. So let's get into this episode with Monique. So we see Monique's godfather. And he comes over and he's helping her with this Not For Lazy Moms podcast, um, the live one that she's having. You know, she's still talking about the fact that the ticket sales are not there. Here's my question for you. Did you promote it? Like, how well did you promote it? That's the big question that I have for you. How well did you promote it? Um, you know, and then she's also talking about the fact that, you know, she's embarrassed. And after this, she wanted to run and hide. But we were with the girls. You said your adrenaline was still high. Which one is it, Monique? That's my problem, man. That's my problem with her. Like I said, she's backpedaling because one minute your adrenaline was so high, you don't remember what happened. Candace threw a, um, a, the wine in your face. And speaking of, like in the comment section of the after show, some of her fans kept coming after me. I mean, you guys can come after me all you want to. I don't really, they can come after me all they want to. I don't really give a fuck, to be quite honest with you. Because people are making a comparison between what Monique did and what Candace did last season with Ashley when Ashley was asked to leave her home. Because people like, well, Candace threw a knife at Ashley. Number one, it was a butter knife. I don't think anybody has ever died from getting cut by a butter knife in my life. I don't think that that's ever happened, number one. Number two, Ashley was asked to leave Candace's house. Now, yes, Giselle was the one that told her to come back in, but Ashley, after she was asked to leave, Ashley said, you know what, Giselle? You being messy and you're playing a, a slippery slope. I'm out. Number three, people keep talking about, but that's her mother's house. I don't give a fat flying fuck whose house it is. She lives there, right? As long as she's living under that roof, it is her house. Minus the fact that it's her mom, if, it, if her mom's name is on the lease, deed whatever or whoever i don't give a fuck who pays the lease rent deed or whatever they pay i don't care i don't care candace lives there so it is candace house candace had every right to ask ashley to leave and they're like well she was an invited guest she was an invited guest up until she was asked to leave once she was asked to leave she was no longer an invited guest she was trespassing so if the cops were called no charges would have been filed against candace because ashley at that point was an intruder she could say, I didn't know what the hell she was going to do. And boom, I hit the bitch with a knife. Although, it was a, again, it was a butter knife. Y'all just, I think for me, I think what I'm seeing is, it's just people who really hate Candace. And, you know, they find any way to justify what Monique did. There is no justification for what Monique did. Period. Point blank. Leaving it there. Um, now, she said that, you know, at first she didn't feel bad, but now she does feel bad. I don't know what to believe with Monique. I honestly, at this point, like I said before, don't care. I'm tired of it. I really want us to move on from this fucking fight. And, you know, she said she wanted to do all this stuff. You know, she wanted to reach out to Candace before this legal stuff happened. Okay, Monique. I mean, if that's what you want to say and if that's what you kind of make your say to make yourself believe it, go for it, Monique. But I don't buy it at all. And then, you know, she's with this podcast, she wants to invite all the girls to the podcast. So she calls um, Wendy and vice Wendy. Wendy is like, eh, I don't know if I want to come because the last time I saw you, you weren't remorseful about what happened with Candace. And then she was like, well, just come and see the journey. She called Robin and said the same thing. Robin was like, I'll think about it and I'll let you know. But send me the details anyway. She calls Karen, invites Karen, and Karen's like, absolutely, I'm coming. So then we see the day of the event. And everyone, well, everyone didn't show up. I was about to say everyone show, Everyone did not show up. The only person who actually showed up was Ashley. Karen didn't show up because Karen was sick. And she had texted Monique the same day to let her know that she was sick. And Monique in her interview with the producers was like, you know, with Karen, you know, I went and supported her LaDon fragrance, eight months pregnant and all. 
Monique, that's a little bit selfish. Like, let's keep it real. Let's call a spade a spade. If Karen was sick, why would you want your sick friend? Sick and pregnant are two different things, sister. Sick, pregnant. Pregnant, you can pregnancy, you can't give that to somebody else. If Karen had a fever, if she had the flu, because this is around November when they did this, and this is flu season. So if Karen had the flu, you know, a cold or anything like that, that is something that can be passed on to other people. Pregnancy, you can't pass that on to nobody else. That is between you and your body and your husband who shot the club up. So, you know, she's telling her people about what she wants. You know, it, it's a Q&A portion with the um, the um, the Not For Lazy Miles podcast. And, you know, they're talking about that, what kind of questions can be asked. Now, I didn't see this initially, but we'll talk about it in just a minute. So, Ashley shows, like I said, Ashley was there. And Ashley, now, see, Ashley was just being messy at this point because she had to let uh, Monique know that with Candace and Karen, that Karen told Candace that if it was her in that position, she would have pressed charges. Okay, what the fuck is the problem? I mean, like I've been saying in my, like I said in last week's review, people handle and react to things differently. I mean, just because some people are street fighters, others are not. Like, some people will, will react and beat your ass, and some people will be like, you know what? I'm gonna let the courts handle that. So I don't know why Monique is feeling some type of way. It was really stupid to be quite honest with you. And then, you know, someone in the, with the um, Q&A asked the question, how were Candace and Monique after the fight? She says, pray for us. <laughs> pray for y'all. Okay, whatever, Monique. Let's move on. All right, you guys, next let's discuss Robin. It ain't much with Robin, so we see her and Juan. So they and them demon spawns are going out to bowl, and her parents are going to join them as well. So, you know, we see the boys, Robin, Juan, like I said, they bowling, and then her parents show up, and then, you know, they discuss Robin's tax issues. Girl, how the hell did you get $90,000 in the hole with the IRS? Now, I know on one episode of the After Show, I think it was the one where it was revealed, She's like, you know, I know when it comes to, like, your water bill, if you don't pay that, they'll turn that off. Girl, when it comes to the IRS, if you don't pay them taxes, if you don't pay that bill, you're looking at jail time. The fuck? <laughs> Robin is just something special. Like, how? I know with the water bill, if you don't pay that, that will get turned off. I know with the water bill, if you don't pay that, that will get turned off. Girl, if you don't pay your fucking taxes... You're looking at a lien or them taking your ass to jail. But okay, Robin, if you say so. <clears throat> so her parents show up, she, and the parents actually just found out that, <clears throat> about her tax issues. And, you know, she's telling them that they want to buy a house, and they're like, well, that, you know, would that put a hindrance on it? I'm pretty sure it will, because, I mean, if you buy a house, they can just take that right from you, right? I would assume. Yeah. But she says, you know, that she's going to get it taken care of and the lien should be lifted soon. You got 90000 Girl, if you had $90,000 in the first place, why the fuck do you just pay this shit? Or make a payment plan with them, like something. I don't know why I want to marry that again. We would have separate everything, separate checking accounts, separate. I mean, everything would be separate. What's yours is yours, and what's mine is mine. Because I feel like in a relationship, Robin is the one that has the issues with money, not Juan. It's her. Uh uh. Wouldn't marry that again. Hell yeah, might as well just go to the courthouse and get married. So Robin goes to the restroom, and when she goes to the restroom, that's when Juan tells the boys and her parents that he wants to marry her again. And they cool with it, I guess. I just wouldn't marry her again. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep it real with you. Would not marry her again, but let's move on. All right, you guys, next let's discuss Karen and Ray. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. So we see Ray and Karen. Now, you guys remember a few weeks ago, Karen had the woman over from the radio station to talk to she and Ray. And you guys remember that didn't go too well because Ray said at that time that he wasn't sure if he was still in love with Karen. So 
you know, he doesn't want to go to a therapist, so they're going to see a life coach. <clears throat> <clears throat> that ain't the Rona, by the way. But, <clears throat> excuse me, that ain't the Rona. Just putting it out there. So, Ray and Karen sit down with the life coach. And basically what I got from this whole situation with the life coach is the fact that with their marriage, <clears throat> excuse me, the roles have sh have shifted in their relationship. It's not what it was when they first got married. Because when they first got married, Karen was a stay-at-home mom. She took care of the kids. She took care of the house. And she was Ray Huger's wife. Now that she is Karen Huger, you know, reality star of the um, Real Housewives of Potomac, you know, with her La Dame fragrance, the roles have now shifted. She's a businesswoman. She's no longer known as Karen Huger, Ray Huger's wife. She is Karen Huger, star of Real Housewives of Potomac. And Ray is now wife, well, husband of Karen Huger from the Real Housewives of Potomac. And I think that's it. I think that's the issue for him. I th one, I think it's a big ego thing. You know, he, he, when he got with her, she didn't have anything. He was the one that had everything. He was the breadwinner. But now that she has this fame from the show, it's like, damn, she doesn't need me for money. She doesn't need me for this. She doesn't need me for that. She doesn't do this anymore. She doesn't do that. But even with the whole, she doesn't, you know, she took care of the house and the kids. But, you know, once the kids leave the house and you, be you guys become empty nesters, shit at that point definitely changes because it like I have a cousin all of her kids are you know running out of ha her out of the house her youngest one is in his sophomore year of college and she used to cook all the time she still cooks but not as much as you know she did when the kids were home their their roles have definitely you know they have changed they eat out they don't eat out as much but they eat out like she doesn't cook like she used to so yeah once the once you're you get to a certain stage in your life Shit just changes, and I don't. I don't think that Ray is. Ha I don't think Ray is happy about that. And the other thing that I, I know that Ray is not happy about is the fact that Ray is ready to retire, and wants to go to Florida. But with this show, and the fame that Karen has got from it, and the notoriety that she's gotten from it, I don't see Karen up and leaving Real Housewives of Potomac anytime soon. I think Karen is happy being in Potomac. I think she's happy with this show. I'm pretty sure she makes good money from the show, so I don't see Karen leaving this platform anytime soon because this platform has made a name for her, and I'm here for it. So, Ray's gonna have to suck it up at some point. I really do hope that things don't come to the point where Karen and Ray divorce because I think they are a good fit for each other, but it might happen. Like I said last week's review, like with Nene and Greg, I feel like it's gonna happen. But let's move on, you guys. All right, guys, next, let's discuss Giselle. So, now the episode had opened up with Giselle. So, we saw Giselle, and she was at a jewelry store, so I'm like, this got to be for Juan. And, lo and behold, it was for Juan. So, which I, I realized I just went out of order, because I've already talked about Robin. But that's neither here nor there. So, yeah, she was meeting with him. They were looking for the rings, and that one ring that they looked at, it was a really nice ring. But when that woman said $59,000, I'm like, what? I was with Juan. You got anything between eight and ten thousand dollars? And you know she pulled out some rings. And when when Rob, not Robin, but when Giselle was taking pictures of the rings, I'm like, that is so fucking tacky, Giselle. You're taking pictures of the ring to send it to Jamal. Why would you want to? Never mind. Never mind. If you know that Juan is picking this ring out for Robin, I mean, I guess it's to throw hints at him to say, hey. This is probably something that I would like. Whatever. Don't really care. So, you know, Juan was telling her that he's going to talk to um, Robin's parents about this situation. Now, like I said, the one ring, it was, I mean, the one the ring that Jim, um, Giselle had on her finger, that ring was badass. It was beautiful. Beautiful. I think I actually think that is the ring that he chose for her. I can't remember. I, I would have to go look at the pictures and see. So then, you know, um, Jamal comes into town. I guess he came into town for something with one of the girls. I don't know. Because when we saw him, Jamal, he was getting in a car with Giselle. And she was taking him to the airport so the way he could head back to Atlanta. 
And, you know, they were talking about their relationship, about it being a long distance relationship. Honestly, you guys, I don't know what I got out of that whole conversation with them because I, when it comes to Giselle and Jamal, I just, I don't care. Seriously, I don't care. So I wasn't really, I was listening, but I was, just, it was just like, a, it was like, really, me this bad, man, because I know what the fuck they were talking about. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm lost. I was lost. If you guys know what they were talking about, please let me know in the comment section below because I, I was hella motherfucking lost. But let's move on and close this episode out, you guys. All right, guys, next, let's discuss Wendy. So we see Wendy. She's with her family. I think she was getting ready to, um, you know, feed her daughter. And, you know, she gave her son some of the breast milk. I'm pretty sure that was, I think that was breast milk. Hell, I don't know. I think that was breast milk. I mean, the way she was shimmying, I'm like, it's got to be breast milk. So she's having this event. It's called Wine with Wendy. And she's going to talk about some political stuff there. And she's inviting all the girls to the um, Wine with Wendy with the exception of Monique. And she calls on camera. We see her call Giselle and Candace. When she calls Giselle, Giselle asked her, who is this? I'm like, damn, that lets you know that woman does not have your name saved in her contacts. And she says she's inviting everybody with the exception of Monique. And, you know, Giselle was happy. So then she calls Candace and, you know, Candace tells her that, you know, she's still not OK after this whole fight with Monique. I mean, I, I, I get it to an extent because this is Candace's first. I guess this is her first physical altercation that she's ever been in. So I can understand her being, you know, shook and upset. I can understand that. Because I was about to say when my first fight, I wasn't shook up, but I but when my first fight, I won. I won that fight. So that's neither here nor there. So I won my first fight. Actually, you know what? After my first fight, I was a little bit. Nah, nah, I wasn't shaking up. My, my adrenaline was pumping. That I will say, my adrenaline was pumping after my first fight. But I wasn't worried about. It. I wasn't worried about anything like him coming after me or nothing. Because I beat the shit out of him, so. I mean, if he wanted to fight me again, I, I, I wasn't going to give him what he wanted. He would have to sneak me. But okay. But with Candace, I mean, I, I, under, I do understand that she grew up differently than what, you know, she grew up in a different environment. So I, I get it. I get it. And that's, even still with me saying that, you would think that I grew up as a barbaric person, but my mom did not raise me that way. My mom didn't raise me to fight. I think Candace's mom raised her a little bit differently than my mom did. Because my mom didn't advocate for fighting. I will say that. She did not advocate for that. But the thing that my mama always said to me is that if a person is big enough to hit you, they also big enough to get laid out. So lay them the hell out. And that's what I do. That's how I... Now at 31, am I about to fight somebody? Hell the fuck no. I ain't got time to be fighting nobody at 31. I don't have time for it. So I, I understand Candace. I do. Looking back, thinking about it, I do understand her. That would kind of, I mean, if that was my first fight and, you know, I wasn't expecting it to happen, yes, I would be a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit afraid, a little bit apprehensive. I would be. So, Candace, I'm on your side. So, you know, she's also talking, you know, um, Wendy asked her how, she, how is she and Karen. And, you know, she was, she started to stutter a little bit. She says, well, hell, that tells you right there we ain't good. So she's like, well, you know, at your um, event, I would like it would be a, would it be okay if I pull Karen to the side and have a conversation with her? She says, cool. So then we, like I said, at the event, all the ladies show up. So we see Karen there, we see Ashley there, we see Giselle there, Candace there, and then we see Robin coming with this terrible ass wig. I mean, that wig was hideous. That wig looked like if you lit a match to it, it would burn in seconds. Um. Now, the one thing that I do want to say is I give Wendy her props for this whole situation, this whole thing, because it was about, you know, black women and voting. And if you guys have not voted already, do yourself a favor, go vote. And if you're not registered, I don't know what to say to you. Look in your area and see if you can still register. I mean, we are how many days away from the election? I would hope everybody is registered to vote. 
because we are literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, we're literally nine, ten to nine, nine to ten days away from the election, you guys. I hope you guys are registered to vote. If you guys have not voted, again, early voting. I know early voting in Texas is is good until this Friday. In your area, look and see when early voting is ended. And if you don't go to early voting, go election day. Go election day. Or if you can vote by mail, look into that as well. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say about voting. But I will say I definitely do give Wendy credit for that because she did say that, uh, she did say something that, you know, stood out, which I already knew that. Because the women were talking about, you know, HBCUs, um, you know, the way the, the police brutality. <clears throat> That stuff doesn't start with the president. That starts. That stuff starts in the local. It starts locally. Look and see in your local area who you're voting for. You know the um, the the county clerks, the um, the constables, the judges. Like everyone that you're voting for, research them in your area and make sure that they align with what you believe in. If they are wanting to push forward things that you are passionate about, like I like I said. You know, HBCUs, um, prison reform, police brutality, a slew of other things. If they align with you, vote for that person. It doesn't matter if, I mean, now if you're, if you're like me, like I've said before, I don't identify as either a Republican or a Democrat. I don't really identify as, I don't even identify as an independent. How I identify is if someone speaks to me, if you're a Republican and I like what they say, I'll vote for you. If you're a Democrat and you say some stuff that aligns with what I believe and feel, I vote for you. Like with Tina, um, Tina, 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 Tina from Mary Mary when she said that why that aligned with her Christian values, girl, what Christian values did he align with? I'm still not seeing what Christian values that man aligned with. I don't understand it. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so then, you know, Karen and Candace, they go aside and talk and Candace tells, you know, Karen, how she feels. She feels that Karen, you know, is coddling Monique. She is not holding Monique accountable for what she did. Now, the one thing that they did, you know, the producers did manage to show is when Karen was at her, they were all at her house. Karen did tell Monique that she was wrong for what she did. Now, looking back at it, yes, I can definitely see where Karen is more specifically on Monique's side as opposed to Candace's side. But I also see where it can be hard for Karen because these are both good friends of hers. Because if she says something to Monique and then she says something to Candace, people are going to, I feel like some of these girls are going to be like, oh, so you said that. And, 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 and they're actually doing it. The fact that she said that Monique was wrong for what she did, but the fact that she told Candace that, you know, she would press charges. It's like they're playing her in the middle. She's wrong for saying this, but then she's wrong for saying that. But why don't you pick a side? I think that's what the issue is. <clears throat> I really think that's what the issue is altogether. Is it feels like people want her just to pick one side and say, Monique, I'm on your side, or Candace, I'm on your side. And you know, Karen was like, um, you know, <clears throat> the same thing that you said I'm doing for Monique. I did that for you last year. <clears throat> And, you know, Wendy comes downstairs, checks on them, and I do not agree with Karen telling Mom, um, Wendy that she, was, <laughs> that she was ignorant. I didn't agree with that comment at all. Um, and the one thing that she, another thing that she said that I didn't agree with is the fact that, you know, she was talking about Monique might have a medical issue with her anger. Karen, I love you to death, but that is a crock of fucking bullshit. Monique, I mean, I get Monique says she blacked it, but that is a crock of fucking bullshit, Karen. That is bullshit at its finest. Monique knew what she was doing. Wendy pointed it out specifically. Even if she blacked out, why did she then run around that barn talking about she gonna kill the bitch? You gotta explain that, Karen. But you guys, that is gonna be it for me. That is the review. I know this video is probably long as hell. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. 
once again in the comment section, you guys. Let us be respectful of me and each other out there. Like, I'm not finna, I, I don't do the disrespect. I don't. If you guys don't agree with what I'm saying, that's fine. I know last week in my comment section, I, I can't remember the subscriber that I was talking to, but we had a disagreement about, um, we had a disagreement about Karen and, not Karen, we had a disagreement about Candace and Monique, where she, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I meant to look at it, I meant to look at it before I came on camera so I could address you. Because we had a civil, we had a civil conversation, a civil one, where you said that you didn't believe that Monique, um, Candace had any fault in it. You said that Monique was 100% at fault for the fight. I agreed with you, and I and we we had a civil conversation. I prefer that. If you guys disagree with me, say that in the comment section. Say you disagree with me, and you can point out why you disagree with me. And you guys see in the comment section, I respond to each and every one of you. Like, I don't know why some, but again, like I said, be respectful of me and everybody else in the comment section. And that is going to wrap, like I said, again, wrapping it up. Do me a favor, you guys. Stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your masks. And socially distance, you guys. Stop, don't listen to what YSAP is saying. We're almost done with it. We're learning to live with it. We're not learning to live with it. People are dying from it, you jackass. But I'm off, you guys.